I went out to Colorado because I went to the United States Air Force Academy. I got a degree. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I made Lieutenant Colonel in the Air Force. Some people are like, oh, you look too young to be Lieutenant Colonel. I was like, you should have seen when I was a 23-year-old lieutenant flying cargo planes. I look 14, <laughs> which was horrible for passengers. <laughs> I had a World War II veteran get on my plane. What do you do on the plane, little boy? He was like, I'm your pilot, sir. He's like, we're taking a train, man. They got babies flying airplanes. But I love being a service member. I get to answer questions. People have a lot of questions because they don't know much about airplanes or the service. And uh, I love it because most of the questions are dumb. I love dumb questions because I put them in my show. Some of them start out sounding smart. Somebody was like, oh, you were a cargo pilot? Yeah, I flew cargo planes. He's like, did you ever air refuel where you go behind another airplane in the sky and get gas? I was like, yeah, we used to do that. He's like, when you were up there, did you get out and talk to the other pilot? <laughs> I'm in the Air Force, man, not Cirque du Soleil. What do you <laughs> think we string ropes? Like, I'm coming to see you, Bobby. I don't know what you thought. <laughs> My favorite dumb story ever, this is my favorite dumb story ever. Where this, I've gotten a few times, but so my favorite example, I was in Boise, Idaho, and this nice older lady walks up, she's like, that was so funny, you've been in the Air Force 22 years? I was 22 at the time. It was, I, it, it was, I wasn't 22, it was 22 years. And, she, and I said, yes, ma'am. Like, my neighbor's son just finished boot camp in the Army. He's stationed in Georgia. Do you know Jimmy? <laughs> M maybe. <laughs> I just wish, I, you know, I've, I've been to war and all that. I wish I had good stories for you guys. I, I don't. All my stories are the weird or embarrassing. Like I was flying into Baghdad at night, 2003. We see machine gun fire coming up at us. I call up on the radio. I tried to sound cool. Baghdad Tower, lift to 4702. We got ground fire north of the field. It's pretty cool, right? They said, 4702, stand by. <laughs> Did he just say, stand by? Like I'm on the phone with Sprint or something? <laughs> Guy calls me back, 4702, don't worry about it. They are celebrating in town tonight. They're not shooting at you. They're shooting their guns in the air. And I was like, well, that is a relief, except I'm in the air. <laughs> that didn't sound cool that day. <laughs> Some of the stories sound good in synopsis, but then when you hear the actual story, um, it's not good. It's not a good story. I'll tell you one, I prevented an international incident. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. Just wait. 2004, we're flying to Dakar, Senegal, West Africa. Drop supplies there to the embassy. And if, you've, if you were there at the time, uh, you should probably get tested. Uh, no, if you were there. <laughs> <laughs> for malaria. If you were there at the time, uh, you may know this, you could not make a big purchase on credit. Anything over $5,000, you had to pay cash. Not a big deal until you have to refuel a 300,000 pound cargo plane, which was 75,000 pounds of gas, which came to $114,000 that we had to pay cash. So who do you think they sent in with the money? Was it a crack squad of Marines? or Navy SEALs, <laughs> or Army Rangers. Nope, they sent in First Lieutenant Sardewey, <laughs> who had gotten a B minus in hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> and I thought the money would be in like a silver case, right, with the tight bills. Brrr. No, they handed it to me in a Nike gym bag <laughs> that was used with broken zippers, a used. Nike gym bag, and the bills were just loose. Like I just robbed a bank. <laughs> and they were like, LT, that's what they call lieutenants. LT, go pay for the gas. I was like, oh, by, by, by myself? <laughs> I don't know, but you should know. <laughs> you may not know this, but you should know that I got expert in the M16 rifle because the dude next to me was nearsighted. 
and kept shooting my target. Like expert was 35 out of 40 holes, I had 47 holes on my target. They were like, you're really good. I'm like, yeah, I make bullets go in and back out and back in. I'm a magician. So they're like, we're kidding. We'll give you some backup. We'll send the lieutenant from accounting. <laughs> this is a kid that was too short to be a pilot. That's why he went into accounting. You know how short you gotta be where they don't let you be a pilot? This stool could be a pilot. <laughs> So they're like, that Lieutenant from Accounting's your backup. I was like, well, you're not gonna see this money again. They're like, we're kidding, we're gonna send some real backup. We're gonna send the Ravens with you. Ravens are security forces personnel that uh, go with uh, airplanes to austere locations to protect them. And if you don't know what security forces are, they are members of the United States military that joined to shoot guns and blow things up. But what they actually do is they stand at the front gate for eight hours a day and check identification. <laughs> Never shoot guns or blow anything up. These are people that want stuff to go down. <laughs> I know, because one of them walked up and like, hey, we can't, take we can't take guns in there, LT, but don't worry, we got these extended batons in our sleeves, anything happens, we got your back. I was like, ha, 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 we're gonna die. All right. So I'm walking in, I got a bag of money, got the lieutenant, got the two security forces guys. I'm thinking, you know what? I'm overreacting. This is an international airport. It's gonna be fine. And I was wrong. I open the door, it's a dark room. There's one light and it is swinging like we're at a haunted house. Me and the lieutenant from accounting walk in with the bag of money, like Shaggy and Scoob, like digga, 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 digga. I see over here standing there two guards. I say it like that because they were not in uniform, or unless you think of a uniform as a Somali pirate starter kit. <laughs> they had sandals, holes in their pants, AK-47s, gold teeth. It was terrifying. <laughs> And from in the back room, in the back office, in the darkness, I hear the deepest voice ever like, what do you want? And we, we both went, ah! We screamed like we were in a haunted house. And then I couldn't stop yelling, we wanna pay for the gas! So I was like, okay. So I give the money to the lieutenant, I say, go pay for the gas. And here's the thing, if you were in West Africa, if you go to West Africa today, you may know this, everybody there is really tall. So the counter reached the lieutenant at eye level. He had to throw the bag of money, like, <laughs> to get it up there. And then he had to stand on his toes like a kid at an ice cream shop, like, I want chocolate. That's what it looked like. <laughs> so the guy slides in the receipt, the lieutenant looks at it, he goes, ah, uh, sir, you have to sign the receipt. And the man was like, no, no, no sign, you take. And then the lieutenant from accounting, who was super short, said, ah, uh, you're gonna sign it, or we're not and I'm standing over here like, what are you doing, Oompa Loompa? <laughs> and the guy behind the counter was not ready for that. He's like, no, no, no sign, you take. And the lieutenant goes, well, if you don't sign it, then we're not leaving the money. He puts his hand on the bag, and as soon as that bag, his hand touched the bag of money, from over here, I heard this sound, click. <laughs> which is the sound of a safety coming off an AK-47, which at first didn't scare me, because like, that gun has a safety, what? I didn't think the Russians cared about safety. <laughs> I later found out that's the same switch that puts it to full auto. So, <laughs> the worst part about all of this, as this, this tension that's happening, is behind me, the security forces guys are living the dream. <laughs> they turned into MMA hype men, like, oh. You have batons. <laughs> if I need you to lead a college marching band, I will call you. <laughs> so 
So I gotta stop this whole situation. I lean over, I grab him by the collar, I put, turn him towards me, and he knew something was up because I was paler than usual. Like I was glowing in the dark, and he's like, what's wrong? I go, just take the receipt with no signature. And he said, fine, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't care what you don't like, Scrappy-Doo, take the receipt. <laughs> So he grabs her seat, I'm walking him out, I'm like, get out the door, get out the door, the security force out the door, I'm dragging him along, and I could hear the wheels turning in his head, like, how am I gonna explain this back at accounting? <laughs> and right before I get him out the door, he goes, oh, those two guys have guns! <laughs> so we almost died, and I lost a good pair of underwear. <laughs> Because he was stupid. <laughs> and that is how I prevented an international incident. <laughs> <Dynamo>. <laughs>